So, welcome to our power unit design guide. Uh, this is just a quick introduction to what it does. Uh, it's designed for um, if you're new to hydraulic power units, then it will guide you through each step of what's required, the information you need to design a power unit. But uh, even if you're an experienced designer, it's just um, it will help you optimize and visualize what's happening. You can change the conditions. Um, quite easily and see what happens to the power unit. It's a simulation of a power unit so it calculates the um, heat in, heat out and the uh, energy efficiencies. Um, so it's quite a useful little utility. Um, we've got, just running you through it, we've got our load, you enter your load data, you enter your electric motor data, your hydraulic pump data uh, and your tanks and coolers, so there's everything you need to make a power unit. Uh, what it does do, um, when these are unlocked, we can see that as we change the uh, the flow, we need a larger electric motor, so it steps up the pump size and the electric motor size, so it does automatically build the unit you require, um, but it's sometimes better to lock those down because otherwise uh, it can be going all over the place value so once you know roughly what you need lock those down uh, and then you um, you get reliable figures as you come through it so looking at the load data we've got pressure and flow which are fairly straightforward you've got your load so it's going to need a certain low pressure and a certain flow uh, we also have here the percentage of time at pressure so we're doing heat calculations on the reservoir um, if we open this extra window gives us a little bit more information about our supply our load sorry and um, you can see if you change the amount of time the percentage of time that's on heat on load you get a lot more heat into the system so that will affect our um, standby temperatures uh, what we've also got is a percentage of power going into heat so if you're using directional valves it might be 15 proportional valves might be 30 uh, but you can do a quick calculation on your load so that you uh, can see what, what sort of percentages it's going to be heat or useful work. And also the standby power loss. It's, that's quite important because uh, even when it's not being used, there's a certain amount of energy being produced, used by the system, and that essentially all goes into heat. Uh, so that can have an effect on standby temperatures. So it's good to... Uh, to know that and put that in and see the effect. Next we have our electric motor. So we can put AC or DC. Um, we can see the curves here. Now this is uh, based on AC at the moment, it's a little larger, but these little um, DC power units now, they can be very difficult to size because uh, as you change the pressures, the flows change, the, um, the electric motor speed changes quite considerably under load in different torque conditions so uh, it could be quite difficult to, to work out what's actually happening and to see what's happening um, so it's a useful little program for, for doing those and essentially as you change the um, as you put the pressure up or down you can see the speed changes it doesn't change too much on a AC system um, but it does it will change and that will affect the flow so when we're trying to um, optimize and save energy because really in the um, in earlier days we may have just added 15% taken our load and added 15% extra to be safe on the pump and 15% extra to be safe on the electric motor and you end up with a huge installed power for the actual power that you need as output um, but we were just being safe to make sure things didn't stall out uh, these days we need to look at our energy efficiency a lot more and we need to look at our costings a lot more so we want to get as close as possible a perfect system but obviously we don't want to um, get it to stall out so this is a nice way of, of checking it but you do need to look at your efficiencies for the various systems um, particularly now when we come to our our pumps pumps can it can be difficult getting the figures from the manufacturers but uh, you know we you can particularly at lower temperatures you can get uh, some quite serious drop-offs in efficiency that if that's working at your maximum power it can be important if it's just at the lower speeds or when the power is not close to its limits then it, it might not make any difference um, if you are 
going to um, send this through to get a quote from someone afterwards or the final figures then enter some details into here your environmental conditions drive conditions or everything you can uh, each one's got a little area to add information so you can um, inform the supplier potential supplier what you need uh, make sure you don't get any any embarrassing issues afterwards um, so we've got a range of pumps here with some of their figures their volumetric efficiencies and we calculate the overall efficiency um, volumetric efficiency is at the top overall efficiency we calculate by the curve which you can put your own values in if you need to you can put your own values in for the electric motor as well uh, if you need to although the standard ones are already included got a range in there um, so this is our pump figures and um, you know you can see here if you're changing the flow we might need 19 but we're a selectee we've got a 16 cc per rev pump so we're going to get 23 litres a minute um, out of that system with a fixed speed electric motor now moving along we have our tank data so the tanks sized when it's unlocked it's sized on the number of recirculations per minute uh, different machines environments will have different figures for what they require on this there's there's more information on the website uh, as to what you what range you might like to use but really it, it does depend on the equipment you are designing um, so if you change this it does change the the reservoir size based on the flow rates um, but if we lock it down we can actually add our own useful volume uh, change the surface area it gives you a guide to the sizes but the surface area of the tank is important for heat loss so if you know what yours is you can put it in directly and you can change these a little bit um, just to see even just to see what effect it has on the system uh, if you want to reduce your reservoir size down you might run into problems but uh, the whole point of this is that you can actually test it and see the see the differences and see the temperature rise rate quite clearly um, final one, the coolers. We've not built in standard coolers yet, might do later, but uh, essentially you've got a temperature difference between the air and the fluid. So that allows uh, heat radiated from the tank. Uh, and then you can put a cooler in if you need to. Uh, certainly if you've got a cooler working there, you can see you can easily uh, keep it under control. Uh, so that about sums up the various things you can do. Uh, the results here show you quite clearly what you've got installed and the powers in, power, power out, give you an idea where your losses are and what's happening um, and standby losses, how much uh, you're losing from the reservoir which uh, keep the temperatures under control so it's got quite a lot of information if you do need to record it, I mean one of the things you can do on this is run tests under different conditions and then output the results uh, so you then get a list of all the data which you can copy and put into an Excel spreadsheet uh, and then you can line this up with calculations double check the calculations from here um, but once you've got all the figures you can quite simply put your own calculations in Excel or you can do a test get a lot of data a lot of the values and then produce a graph for different conditions um, so you can use it as an experimental power unit to get data from and um, email it to yourself or just copy and paste and that's about it really it would be interesting to see if you've done some examples and you check it against power units it would be interesting to uh, get the data back to make sure it's um, working properly see, see if we can improve it uh, other than that hopefully let us know if you find it useful